Welcome, this is Tom Rush, Rush Reviews. Today we have a mini tack, cold steel mini tack. This is a, uh, a little knife I purchased about uh, 12 years ago now, and uh, really glad I did. Uh, I like this knife. It's a, uh, uh, a wee little knife that, uh, that can. Uh, it's, just zoom out a bit there for you so I can get a bit of room in there. And as you can see, it's what they call a kiridashi uh, style of Japanese uh, uh, blade shape, which, you know, is, uh, uh, I would call a uh, Warncliffe. Uh, let's call it a, uh, what Cold Steel call it, which is a kiridashi. And uh, it's a kiridashi Warncliffe, I would call it. Um, probably more Warncliffe, but uh, because it's extra pointy. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, Kiridashi. Uh, I can't see, a, there's a bit of resemblance, but uh, not enough for, uh, for myself to call it, uh, refer to it really as a Kiridashi uh, style blade shape. Uh, but uh, definitely I'd call it a Warncliffe. But uh, anyway, that's all right. Uh, the blade length on this one, which I'll measure for you, uh, when I looked up the specifications for this one, uh, it said it had a blade length of three and a three quarter inch, which is not so. Uh, in fact, I get two and a quarter uh, inch off this one. Two and a quarter, yeah, two and a quarter inch uh, for cutting length of the uh, the blade on this one. The uh, overall length you're looking at six inch. Okay, if you look overall with the sheath, you're looking at six and a half inch. So the blade handle length, start at the very start of the handle, you're looking at uh, three inch. So uh, their specifications say the overall length is six and three quarter. Yeah, it's pretty close. Um, Japanese. It's a Japanese blade steel, which is the Oz 8A, pretty uh, mid-grade uh, blade steel that uh, is really excellent as far as uh, uh, price. Uh, it's low cost. The uh, uh, fact that uh, it has it sharpens up nicely. You can get a razor sharp edge on it, and. Uh, if you've watched some other videos, you'll probably know that you know I'm I'm not a big fan of Oz8, uh, Oz8A, whatever it might be, but uh, it's okay. It's uh, tough, very tough. The tip on this fella here, I've rammed this into uh, uh, wood and expected the tip to bend or break. Nothing. It uh, it held up and. Uh, as many other knives that would have uh, just snapped the tip, especially being such a fine tip on this one, would have snapped that tip straight off. Now, did it get any bend in the tip? I was testing it. This is years ago when I was testing it. I do still remember thinking to myself, how could that have survived? Uh, I don't normally beat up my knives, but uh, I don't know. I just want to try the tip out with that particular steel and... Uh, it's uh, definitely held up to the rough treatment uh, it received. The uh, okay, the uh, weight of this is supposedly 2.7 ounce according to the specifications on Cold Steel's website. Uh, let's just have a look and see if that rings true for the uh, the one that I've got. I'll put it back in the sheath first. Get an overall weight, and we've got uh, 90 grams. Or uh, take the sheath off and what do we get we get 61 grams so that's the weight it's a light blade it's uh has a blade stock thickness of 2.5 mil uh, according to this but uh, once again we'll see how accurate that is uh, which we have 2.7 okay now that's with these. I think these are about one mil out. Uh, I will check that. Um, not now, but I will check that for future measurements. But yeah, from what I can tell, it's 
probably 2.6 I would think. So roughly 2.6 mil thick or 2.5 according to the specs. Uh, the handle uh, is a G10 on this one and it's the Griv X uh, trademark style of uh, cold steels. Now admittedly this one I remember when I, I bought this one, it was uh, G10 handle scales. Uh, after that, shortly after that, about a year maybe, they started to release these in a, uh, a faux uh, G10. So it was like an imitation uh, G10 that, yeah, it, it was uh, uh, supposedly just as uh, grippy, or almost as grippy, almost as good, but hey, I was very lucky to get the... Uh, G10 on this one because uh, they were messing about with uh, the faux ones uh, and it is made in Taiwan as you can see there so it's not China but uh, Taiwan and uh, that's okay because it's only a low cost knife it's not uh, it's not a big dollar value this one uh, I paid uh, 12 years ago as I say 70 oh, sorry $27 uh, uh, Australian by the time you did the conversion and everything so yeah they did cost less 12 years ago so no surprise there however um, with the cost of steels and manufacturing and everything else over the 10 year period you're now looking at to buy this in Australia I can pick one of these up for $75 uh, if I was in the US I'd be able to get it somewhere between the $27 and $35 mark so they've definitely gone up over here in price, uh, but I did order this out of the US uh, directly. So, yeah, um, you can see just, I'm not sure whether you maybe you can't see, but just in the holes there, uh, some exposed uh, uh, tang that uh, has gone a little bit rusty. Now, generally, this uh, uh, I think it's something like a, a 13, uh, 9. Oh, hang on. 9C13 MOV, something like that, the uh, uh, the MOV steel that uh, they now use. Uh, this one, as I say, is uh, the um, Oz 8A. However, I did see that uh, the, some of the latest ones, it's something along the lines of that 9C13 MOV uh, blade steel, which... Uh, I don't know anything about, but I do Oz 8. Uh, so, yeah. They have changed the blade steel by the sound of it, and they have changed it out from the originals that had the G10 to a uh, faux or um, imitation uh, G10. But uh, I'm sure they're almost as good or just as good. So, you've got. Uh, a few other designs uh, that they did produce with this one. Uh, they put out a Tanto blade shape. A, uh, now I'll insert those just here so that you can uh, see those come up on the screen. The uh, Bowie, uh, which is a current design. I believe the Tanto is a current design. The Kuridashi, which is this one, or uh, Warncliffe. Uh, it is, uh, it may not be current anymore. Um, I might just be looking at stock that's old stock, not too sure. The uh, Skinner uh, is uh, one, another blade shape, and the Beaver Tail, which I would have liked to have gotten some, uh, the Beaver Tail, but uh, I missed out. It took a bit long to, uh, to get around to that one. I wanted to get this one first, try it out, and by that point I'd put in the order for uh, other other blades so I missed out and I don't believe you can get the beaver tail anymore and uh, the only two that I can see is current on the cold steel website is the Tanto and the Bowie so you can still get these however uh, they, they no doubt put out a lot of them and dotted throughout the planet uh, they're on the shelf in some spots but out of stock in most and whether they're going to be reproduced I really don't know the uh, as I say, the, this knife uh, does have this hilt um, style uh, grip, which is incredibly comfortable in the hand. It gives you incredible control and uh, really does make for a, uh, a sure grip 
on the uh, on the blade there. So excellent uh, maneuverability, reverse grip, excellent. The sheath is really a plastic, you know, spun nylon kind of plastic uh, sheath, but they call it Securex, and boy, is it secure. They really have done a great job on uh, their sheaths and getting them to uh, to fit, or at least on this one and the others that I have tried. Nice snap. Uh, it's a neck knife, so ultimately, you know, you put a couple of bit of paracord through there or beaded chain if you want the breakaway ability and uh, you have a really excellent uh, neck knife. Uh, I don't recommend neck knives at all because normally you're worried about the knife coming out of the sheath, not with this one. This one is uh, in there the way it should be in there and uh, congratulations to uh, the designer which I uh, believe is, uh, let me just get the name of, Lynn Thompson. Yeah, he's a, uh, uh, I believe he, he's like the, he was the Cold Steel owner or, or had a big part to play in Cold Steel if not the original guy. I'm not too sure about that but uh, you can address that in the comments if you'd like to uh, update me uh, with uh, Lynn Thompson's uh, position with Cold Steel or if he uh, has moved on to greener pastures. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, he designed many knives uh, for Cold Steel and uh, as I say, I've had the belief that he was uh, uh, you know, one of the top guys in there. And uh, uh, he really has, he does put a lot of thought into uh, his knives. So. Uh, very impressed and congratulations uh, to Lynn for his uh, outstanding uh, design efforts and uh, I really do believe this is uh, really a, a, a top-notch uh, little fixed blade that uh, you could check in the uh, glove box of your car or in the uh, uh, in your backpack in your uh, uh, you know your bug out bag whatever you might have that uh, you want to really solid little knife in a various, well back in the day, various uh, uh, blade shapes uh, that uh, it was low cost and did the job and uh, did it well. So apart from the blade steel, which I've never been a fan, on, a fan of, uh, it's a great knife uh, that uh, does an awesome job, uh, made out of uh, great handle scales and uh, uh, designed incredibly well for fit in the hand and fit in the sheath. Uh, even though that's only spun nylon plastic, it uh, is an awesome sheath. The uh, rivets there, a, uh, they appear to be a brass, because you can see the brass wearing through, where I've had paracord through there. I did try it as a neck knife, uh, camping and that sort of thing. Excellent. Yeah, there's not much I could say that's a, a negative for it. it uh, apart from the, the blade uh, going a little bit blunter, quicker than what I would like, but Hey, back then you, you, know, you paid a lot more for the luxury of uh, super steels, so for what it is and to keep the price down, I think they, uh, they made an excellent choice with uh, the materials they've used. So, uh, yeah, you can put a lanyard, um, because it is a shorter blade, you, if you want that secure feeling of a lanyard and like a lump coming out the back there just to hold your thing. Not that you need it, because this has the... Uh, that uh, beautiful finger groove hilt uh, set up there, which really does the job just as well as a, uh, a lanyard would, probably a lot better to be honest. You've got T8, uh, look like, I don't know, T, T6s T or something in there for the uh, handle scales. And yeah, they just uh, unscrew and handle scales come off. Have I done that? No, I haven't. Uh, should I? Yeah, definitely. I should get some oil in there and make sure that it's uh, going to stand the test of time and doesn't rust away. But uh, with the steel, it's pretty unlikely, to be honest. I think uh, unless it's in a corrosive environment like uh, uh, ocean spray, something like that, I think it'll hold up just fine uh, without any attention. I think that's one of the benefits of that uh, Oz 8. Anyway, that's... Uh, that's that little beauty there. I'll, I'll see if there's any other details I've missed. Oh, US dollars, you're looking at, if I didn't mention it, you're looking at between $27, $35. Um, 
and I mentioned the steel, uh, the weight. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's really about all I could say about it, apart from the fact that it has served me well. And uh, I sometimes I'm a little iffy about whether I should have spent money on a, a knife or not, but this one, I was thrilled that I got it. I was thrilled I got it when it had the uh, proper uh, uh, authentic uh, G10 handle scales uh, before they changed it out to the, uh, the uh, faux ones. And uh, I think it's a terrific knife. Uh, I really do think it's worth you, your money to purchase this one. Uh, or uh, possibly even one of the newer variations uh, like the, uh, the Bowie or the, the Tanto. Uh, so that's that. I love that click. Oh yeah, she's good. So beautiful. And uh, if you could hit that like button, and uh, click subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. I'd be very much appreciative. And also if you could leave any uh, comments that you have or any questions that you might have and uh, put them through to me, uh, I would be only too happy to answer them. And uh, I enjoy the interaction, so uh, yeah, please feel free to do so. Oh, just on the back there you can see that brass, I think it's brass, shining through uh, or just coming through with the paint's worn away there. So just, I thought I'd mention that because somebody else had mentioned that they, it was plastic rivets. Uh, clearly this one is not. Uh, as for the newer ones, something you might want to check. But uh, this one at least is the uh, brass rivets. So yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much. And uh, until next time, uh, enjoy your knives and uh, don't cut yourself. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.